In the late 1990s, the management team of Procter & Gamble were in a bit of a pickle. Not a literal pickle, of course. This is being in a literal pickle. Big reveal, I'm a pickle. What do you think about that? I turned myself into a pickle. But they did have a problem. If you've used any of these products, then you know who Procter & Gamble is. Their array of brands is mind boggling. In the financial year 2021, sales of P&G products topped 76 billion dollars. But you don't have this sort of success without some downs to go with the ups. And in the late 1990s, one of their product categories was underperforming. Household floor cleaning detergent. Revenue had flatlined. This is the story of what they did next. Now, admittedly, at this point, you might be wondering, why should I care about some random corporation trying to sell a cleaning product? The answer is, you shouldn't. This story is instructive, not because of what the problem is, but how they went about solving it. They solved the problem, potentially costing them millions of dollars with an incredibly simple and cheap invention that has resulted in billions of dollars of revenue that continues to this very day. This story actually has nothing to do with cleaning floors. It is a story about insight and innovation with a practical, repeatable approach you can implement immediately today if you want to come up with your own billion dollar idea. If you don't know who I am, I'm Sean Kenny. I have worked with thousands of leaders and hundreds of teams for over a decade with some of the world's great companies. And along with Michelle Rushton, we run our business, People of Influence, which exists to equip leaders to become people of influence, to get better results with and through other people. Let's get into it. When faced with flatlining revenue for their floor cleaning detergents, the management team had plenty of tactics at their disposal. The most obvious was sales and marketing. A fresh advertising campaign, new packaging, bundling the product with other products, new displays in stores, etc, etc, etc. But whatever they tried, revenue didn't. Budge. So they turned to their scientists. At the time, the corporation had more scientists on staff than any other company in the world. More PhDs than the faculties of MIT, UC Berkeley, and Harvard combined. But the scientists were at a loss. When they made detergents stronger, they damaged the floor and irritated the skin. Any weaker, they didn't clean the floors properly. They had seemingly reached the limits of chemistry. Management was stuck. At this point, I'm tempted to make this story more dramatic. So P&G staged a tournament. Whoever invented a better detergent lived, everyone else would die. They called it the Squ Squeaky Clean Games. Sponsored by Mr. Clean. What they actually did was turn to a consultancy, a design firm called Continuum. And one of the very first things these consultants did was to watch and video people cleaning their floors. Yes, slightly less dramatic than squeaky clean games. But I do love this. Imagine you've just graduated from design school. You're smart, creative, and excited about your new career. And your very first assignment is watching people clean floors. What a thrill. When they reviewed the video footage, there were a few peculiar things they noticed. For instance, people spent a lot of time cleaning the mop itself. In fact, when they timed it, people spent more time cleaning the mop than they did cleaning the floor. They didn't necessarily know what to make of this, but it seemed worth noticing. There was something else they noticed that was less of an overall pattern and more of a one-off instance. An older woman had just swept up some coffee grounds using a dustpan and broom. Then she got a paper towel, wet it, used it to wipe up the leftover debris, and then threw out the paper towel. Again, they didn't know what to make of this, but it seemed worth noticing. They were potentially on the edge of a breakthrough. When sharing their observations with each other, they had the insight. We might be working on the wrong problem. I agree. Instead of designing a new detergent, we need to design a new cleaning implement. They brainstormed. This is what I imagine they said. A self-drying mop. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. What about mopping shoes? I know, an artificially intelligent autonomous vacuum cleaner. Come on, Gary, it's the 1990s. That doesn't sound very realistic. Hey, what about a long handle with a removable tissue on the end of it? I like it. P&G, however, did not like it. I don't like it. People aren't gonna buy this. And even if they did, it would cannibalize the billion dollar market of mops and detergents we're already selling. 
maybe we should pull the plug on this project. Focus groups didn't like the idea either. So in a last ditch effort, the designers built a prototype and tested it with groups of consumers. The same people who hated the idea when it was just an idea now wanted to take the thing home with them. They realized they were onto something. So they continued testing and iterating the product until PNG launched it in 1999. They called it the Swiffer. Before we look at how this story ends exactly, let's pause for a moment because this story does beg the question. If the big idea was this simple, I mean, it was a stick with a tissue on the end of it, why did no one think of this before? To answer that, here's a metaphor we use in our innovation work with corporate clients that they find helpful. If you want to have insights, generate ideas, create innovation, then this is all about connecting dots, but you cannot connect the dots unless you first collect the dots. When you are stuck for insights, for ideas, when innovation stalls, maybe you need to work harder to connect dots, or maybe, like these designers did, you need to collect dots. Maybe what you need is a richer picture of the current reality, a deeper understanding of the problem and people's needs, more empathy. This applies if you want to start a new business, improve your current business results, design a new product or service, improve a product or service, improve a process, system, or piece of technology. This applies anywhere where improvements or innovation could help if you're an entrepreneur, engineer, nurse, teacher, architect, builder. And the good news is anyone can do it. If you have the curiosity, if you have the desire to see a problem from new perspectives and you have patience, there is no reason why you can't be an incredible problem solver and generate valuable ideas. Wait. The Swiffer was finally launched in 1999, nearly five years after those initial videos of people cleaning their floors. By the end of the year, they had sold over $500 million worth. That does seem like a lot of Swiffers. What were they sold for, $5,000 each? Since then, the Swiffer has generated billions of dollars and spawned many, many product extensions. But remember, the idea was simply a stick with the tissue on the end of it, and it was waiting to be discovered. Imagine how many other ideas, how many solutions are out there waiting to be discovered by someone like you. They are waiting for you to collect the dots so you can connect the dots and create breakthroughs that change the world or make household chores a little easier. I suppose that's a good thing too. I hope that was useful. See you next time.